Have you ever needed to get a file from your Mac OS computer to a Windows computer? Well, I'm Ronnie Wong, and I want to show you what the pros know. All right, here's what happened to me the other day. I needed to build a Windows 10 VM, but on a Hyper-V server that I was going to be using to do a demonstration. Now, the only problem that I had was simple. I had the ISO on my MacBook Pro, which I'm showing you right now, and I needed to get that over to that Hyper-V server so that I could use that. Now, the only way I could actually do that, of course, is by maybe copying it onto a USB stick and maybe bringing it over to the physical server. But then I realized something, even that wouldn't work since the ISO is too big for a USB stick. So what can I do so that I can get that ISO file off of my MacBook Pro to get over to that Hyper-V server? Well, I'm going to show you what actually ended up happening. We're not going to use that Hyper-V server, but we're going to use a Windows 10 machine so that it actually works the same way. So the first thing that we need to do is set up sharing on our MacBook Pro. Let me show you how to do that. Now, it can actually be, well, any type of Mac OS machine, but I just happen to be on a MacBook Pro. So I simply selected the Apple icon in the upper left-hand corner. From there, I went to System Preferences, and within System Preferences, we're going to look down here at Sharing. So your sharing icon may actually be located a little bit differently, but it should be there. What we want is on this particular screen is to ensure that we open up file sharing. Now, once I open up file sharing, it actually says, all right, here's the way that you're going to be able to access this. So it does give me an IP address that I can access this from. But I also want to go to options here. And I'm going to verify that I'm going to do file shares and folders using SMB, okay, the server messaging block. And I need to make sure that I have the account that we're going to be using. So this is my account on my machine. I'm going to have to provide credentials over on the Windows machine to do that. So you might see it's unchecked. And if you do, you'll have to check it. And then you'll actually be ready to go. You know, click Done. Now I need to come under here where it says Shared Folders and select the folder I'm going to share. Now when I do that, I already created that shared folder I call Test, I believe. I'm going to click on the plus sign. And once I click on the plus sign, you'll see I've already selected it here. Let me go to the downloads folder. I'm going to select test share. I've put two different files on here so that we could see it as an example. I'm going to click add. And I need to verify that the test share is here. Also, that the actual username that I want is also going to be here as well. And notice we even have everyone and we have staff as well. We're not so worried about that. Okay. But once we get that up and going, that's pretty much all that we need. Now I need to get access to that Windows 10 machine. I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to connect to the actual ISO that I or the uh, VM that I created using remote desktop connection. And in a moment we should actually kind of move over there. And here we are. We are now on that Windows 10 machine that I created. And what we want to do, of course, is when I should go to the search here. And I can simply start typing in the backslash, backslash. Let me see if I can zoom that in so that we can see that a little bit better. It's going to be 10.0.14.168, if I remember correctly. Press Enter. And from that point, it's going to ask me about my credentials on that machine. And if I typed it in correctly, which is possible, and click OK. And now we are on that test share or on that machine. Then I can double click. And here you see those files. Now these files aren't actually going to be ready for this machine, which I was just using as a demonstration. But you can see this is how I was able to get to that Hyper-V server, download the ISO that I needed to by simply getting access to it just like it would on a normal network share inside of Windows 10. So that way it doesn't matter whether your files are actually located on a MacBook or on a Mac OS type of machine, or on a Windows machine, you can always create some type of network share that will allow you to gain access to those types of files. Check out our playlist to see more What the Pros Know videos, and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Ronnie Wong, and now you know what the pros know.